grew up in Oxford, Mississippi, hotty toddy, um, where this artist lived. And I remember as a kid, her sitting on the front porch with her eyes closed. She wasn't a very social creature, but she did these paintings and they were all over Oxford. Ole Miss had some and some of my friends had some. And this one was done for a friend of mine's dad who was the Baptist preacher in town. She did this, uh, his two little girls. One of the little girls had blonde hair and she didn't realize that. And he told her, so she did another painting with a blonde haired girl. And my friend gave me this when my daughter was born because she has dark hair. And her name, the artist? Theora Hamlin. Okay. She did not begin to paint until she was 50. She had apparently been a school teacher before that, had grown up on a farm, then ran a rooming house, and began to paint. Um, my understanding is because she had dreams and visions. Her paintings, for the most part, contain these trees with this kind of interesting speckled foliage, mm -hmm. um, these, these broad expanses of color like the blue you see here and the green with this superimposed over it, often with children in them. Sometimes the paintings are simply the, of the trees. And then interspersed are other paintings that are a little more visionary mm -hmm. and have things like butterflies and things wow. in them. So one of her um, most distinctive characteristics are these stippled leaves in the trees that almost seem to cause your eye to vibrate when you're looking at them. And she did them in many different colors. Yours wow. happens to be this vivid, vivid pink against the blue. The medium is oil on canvas. I believe that's what she tended to mostly work in. And it's clearly signed, as her work generally is. She put her little C for copyright on there to make sure no one else could uh, reproduce it. I think somebody had taken one of her pictures and used it. So that is when she is that started when she began doing that. Right. So well, it's she was smart enough. Though, yeah. Well, she was clearly a very bright woman. Yeah. When she died, she left her house and about 600 paintings to the, the university. Right. And so that's where the largest repository is. And aside from those, the ones that have gotten out into the marketplace seem to be ones that she gave to people. Right. When they get out on the market, they tend to sell at auction in the South, mainly in New Orleans. I would think, um, yeah. Very infrequently, but in the last year, several have sold in the range of between fifteen and twenty-five thousand dollars. A small one like this? Now, no, they have <laughs> been some of the larger pictures. Mm -hmm. I would think one this size uh, at auction today would probably be in the between six thousand and eight thousand dollar range. That's wonderful. And I nice think gift. <laughs> a very nice gift. And I, I suspect as time goes by, because they are rare on the market, um, that that price will probably increase.